Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son, you have bestowed upon us, your people, the brightness of your light. Sanctify this fire and grant that in this Paschal feast, we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll, I'll hold this, let you light it. And The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. The light of Christ.
Please be seated. Let us hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. A reading, excuse me, a reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the sea and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over everything creeping that creeps upon the earth. 
So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that God had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that God had done, and God rested on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that God had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Please stand as able.
us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restore the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the common life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. The rain fell on the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same do day, Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three sons of his sons entered the ark. They and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued forty days on the earth, and the waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. At the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven. And it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out the dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark, for the waters were still on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took it and brought it into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him any more. In the 601st year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and saw that the face of the ground was drying. In the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh, birds and animals and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you, 
and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Please stand as able. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have placed in the skies a sign of your covenant with all living things. Grant that we, who are saved through the water and the Spirit, may worthily offer to you our sacrifice of thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, 
and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt, the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning, watch the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud. At, at the morning, watch the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right, and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider, he is thrown into the sea. Please stand as able.
Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds of the old shine forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm your chosen people from slavery under the Pharaoh to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery, by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all the things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say, say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Please stand as able.
Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into our death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I do. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I believe in God's God. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God and Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and a peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up your church that the spirit of adoption, which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Did you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus? were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we all will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus.
please listen to Psalm 114. Hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel God's domain. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep, tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the herd, the, who turned the hard rock into pool of water and flintstone into flowing streams. Please stand as able. We'll sing verses one and two of Now the Green Blade Rises before the gospel and three and four after. gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed, you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Please be seated. It's a good evening to be here with each of you as we gather in this, I think, beautiful spring. Are we in spring now, weather? No. At least the flowers are here. So tonight is a night of anticipation. In our readings, we witness God's journey, God's desire, God's walk with humanity through time. It's a day for just for jubilant celebration. And in this moment, I want us to pause and reflect on the enduring wisdom of John Christostom as I've tailored his words for our time and place. His Easter sermons resonate across the ages and infuse the hearts of believers with the radiant light of Christ's resurrection. So here in our beloved town and our community, under the embrace of the Olympic Peninsula, we understand the profound value of community and gathering, whether it's in our vibrant festivals, Forest Fest, the Forest Festival, the community and the camaraderie of Oyster Fest, or in the work of the woods and our logging, or on our shores harvesting shellfish, or in the simple acts of supporting our neighbors, our town comes alive with the warmth of spring. Similarly, the message of Easter brings warmth to our souls, enveloping us with the boundless love of our Savior. Let no one among us fear death, for the Savior's death has liberated us. He who was held prisoner by death has conquered it. Jesus broke death, descending into hell, and made it captive. Isaiah's prophetic words echo through the ages, reminding us that the power of Christ embitters hell when it tasted his flesh. Therefore, let us cast aside our own fears and doubts, for the universal kingdom has been revealed and pardon has dawned from the grave. Picture, if you will, the dawn breaking over a clear-cut landscape with stumps and newly planted trees reaching towards the sky. Despite the chill in the air, the promise of sunlight warms the earth and the hearts of those in its presence. This imagery of Easter morning reminds us that light triumphs over darkness, hope conquers despair, and life prevails over death. In our shared experiences of hard work, community gatherings, and even struggles, we bear witness to the cyclical nature of life. Just as every hardship yields relief and every winter gives way to spring, so does the resurrection promise that darkness will be overcome by light. Let us then embrace this glorious day that dawns upon St. David. May our lives be a testament to the hope and renewal found in Christ's resurrection. And may our faith embolden us to spread love, joy, and peace in our community. As the Paschal light pierces the darkness, let it serve as a reminder of the everlasting light of Christ guiding us through every moment of our lives. Happy Easter. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day, this day of resurrection, for Christ has risen. And with his resurrection, we are truly set free. Amen. Amen. Please stand as able. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please greet one another in the name of our Lord.
God's peace. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace be with you. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
please stand as able. May God be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts to God. We lift up our hearts to God. Let us give thanks to the one who created us. It is right to give God thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, the maker of heaven and earth. But chiefly we are bound to praise you, for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world, through Mary's holy child. You have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. You have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. 
and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, dear one, presenting to you from your creation this bread and wine. We pray you, most gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, gather all things into the circle of Christ's love and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. David and all of your saints, we may enter into the everlasting heritage of all your children through Jesus Christ, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, most blessed one, now and forever. And now, as Christ our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. All are invited to receive. We have gluten, um, our hosts are gluten free. And um, our custom is to go forward if anybody needs to receive, is unable to come up, we'll go forward first and provide communion. And if uh, you prefer to intinct, um, I will give you the wafer and our Eucharistic minister will intinct it or dip it in the chalice for you.
see Stan is able. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks.